The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Say to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth as it has been in the year of our Lord, April 5th, 2015, the day of Lord's resurrection being celebrated after Good Wednesday in his crucifixion. The point of today's message is for the believers to put a challenge and a note, as such Apostle Paul tells in Philippians chapter 3, verses 10, 11, and 12 telling to the point that he wanted to know experientially the power of Christ's resurrection. That is, he wanted to experience the same power which raised Christ from the dead, surging through his own being, overcoming sin in his life, and producing the Christian graces. The Greek word for power used here is in that same used in Romans 1.16 and means that which overcomes resistance. And this power of resurrection which Apostle Paul wanted to know was with the purpose because Paul wants to come to know Lord Jesus Christ in that fullness of experiential knowledge which is only wrought by being like him. That meant to say the same attitude of Philippians 2.5 which Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had we need to have without having that same attitude, without having that same knowledge to look and to the power of the experiential way of Christ's resurrection, we are null and void. Because today you may celebrate the festival of resurrection by telling to the point that Christ has been resurrected and you go to the church and have a church program for half an hour of doctrine and then look unto those things which are meaningless and useless church programs. But dear brethren, Apostle Paul tells to the point for us that he wanted to know Lord Jesus Christ, that fullness of experiential knowledge which can be brought only when we are like Christ. And becoming like Christ is to know his mind. And to know his mind is to learn Bible doctrine. So Apostle Paul wanted to know also in an experiential way the power of Christ's resurrection. That is, he wants to experience the same power which raised Christ from the dead, surging through his own being, overcoming sin in his life and producing the Christian graces. And the Greek word for power which meant to say you've been used here that which overcomes resistance he wants to come to know the fellowship of Christ's suffering the Greek word for fellowship means a joint participation are we looking for that joint participation today in this day of our resurrection of our Lord which occurred 2000 years back because dear brethren it is a great privilege for us to understand to survive for the work of the Lord and to know the purpose wherewith Lord Jesus Christ came to this world a quality of life which he led and the catechesis which he has made for us and the unique privilege and opportunity that he bestowed upon us that we being his heirs his sons sharing his eternal life could also have the same mind which Christ Jesus had while he was surviving in this earth but what is happening in today's Christendom the apostate leaders being occupied in the pulpit rising speculations of one after other issues like the doctrinal points or in fact even the church programs our emotional based worship services or the psychological things or philosophical content in fact even the defunct use of the false spiritual gifts visiting personal counseling have really made a flawless error in to the point of Christendom of pulpits that's why believers are not aware to know what is the resurrection of the Lord what is the power to look the experiential way for Christ's resurrection here the resurrection meant to say your spiritual resurrection wherewith you need to attain to that spiritual maturity without attaining spiritual maturity there is no way dear brethren you could ever think or imagine what the things could happen because the Greek word for fellowship is a joint participation and the Holy Spirit which indwells in you the Lord God the Holy Spirit as a divine mentor which teaches to you guides to you which in return energizes your activated human spirit can learn this only in the spirit of the pine in the power of your mind that you can that you can align 
yourself towards this resurrection. The sufferings of Christ spoken of here are of course not his substituted sufferings on the cross, but his sufferings for righteousness sake while on the earth. And that righteousness and based upon true holiness, which we have been learned in Ephesians 4.24, meant to say we need to have a regard for doctrine. Christianity's absolute truth is embodiment of knowledge and Bible doctrine. If you are not having that, then there is no Christianity wherewith you think that you can survive. So the four things which are true to Paul, the one, number one being discoverment, discovered by men to be in Christ by the very life he lives, by coming to know him better at all time and by experiencing the same power that raised from the dead, surging through his own being, and by becoming a joint participator in his sufferings for righteousness, righteousness sake, then Paul constantly uses to the point conformable to Christ's death. So in today's resurrection, these four points you need to understand. The first point, discovered by men to be in Christ, by the very life he lives. That's why he told that I have become a steward and to become a witness for the men as well as in the sight of the Lord. And then he says, by coming to know him better all the time, are we knowing Lord Jesus Christ better all the time? Are we moving on from good, better and the best? Because every day we are wasting our time uselessly and worthlessly. Yearly once also, you are not able to look better all the time in the knowledge of Christ, even by experiencing the same power that raised Christ from the dead, even that you are not also experiencing, because you are just taking the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to the useless and worthless things of this world, as such many people have been into this realm as well. The power which raised Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from the dead, which provided him that resurrection body, the same power though we have been indwelt by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, even we are having the indwelling power of the Trinity, we are not able to give top priority for the things to be understood, the power that raised Christ from the dead. But we are not serving our own being, and we are not becoming a joint partaker, the fourth one. So the point one is discovered by men. Are we recognized by men to be in Christ? Are we known better all the time, Christ? Are we experiencing the same power that is the experiential sanctification process to reach to the status quo, to be attaining that great superior position than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Are we experiencing that? And number four, are we becoming a joint partaker or fellowship in his sufferings for righteousness sake? What sufferings do you have? We have been noted the suffering for blessing, providential preventive suffering as one point you have been given momentum testing and a four categories as other point and you have been in fact even given evidence testing for the third point for righteousness sake because truth and righteousness goes hand in hand holiness and righteousness get together so here holiness regarded on truth and righteousness upon bible doctrine is what apostle paul emphasizes for each and every believer to attain so paul constantly be made conformable to christ's death was his goal exactly even we our lives is being made conformable to Christ's death or not. Not to the point of physical suffering, but to the point of the fulfillment of each and every verse as and then existed. And he fulfilled that law. And he gave top priority for Bible doctrine. Are we look, living the life of conformable to Christ's death in a point of learning doctrine? Or are we not living to the point of Christ's death and just enjoying our lives and we are dying in our own epidemic diseases, including HIV? This is what, dear brethren, we need to understand. When we are giving top priority to the conformable of Christ's death, Christ provides us that health wherewith we need to become more humble, more subjection and learn Bible doctrine and then Lord knows how to get away us out from all the five cycles of disciplines. And Lord provides us the best health, even the scientific phenomena of this world can never understand. The best nutrition which is Bible doctrine, the spiritual world also can never understand. That's what dear brethren, we have been given so great privilege of the mind of Christ in the glimpses to be understood because when we have been conforming ourselves to Christ's death, we are putting top priority Bible doctrine for us to live Christ and to die is profitable because each and every day is doctrine and we feast upon doctrine but since many people rejecting doctrine, being into this ignorant world and arrogantly enough, not able to learn doctrine, not able to give time for doctrine are 
conformable to their own lust patterns in nature of satanic sponsoring activities and that's the death they are surviving known as sin unto death that's why each and every believer has been given this grace provision a grace provision of rebound whenever he's out of fellowship in a very quick manner less than a fraction of a second by using the privacy of his own priesthood you could come and get back into the fellowship and reside in the sphere where with lord calls you known as divine dinosphere and this divine dinosphere if you are not able to recite you know what lord gives you first a warning discipline through a pastor or through a close friend or through a believer telling to the point you are walking contrary to the word of the lord and then to if you neglect the word of the lord and then to if you follow your own practices lord takes you till to the point of death which has been known as intensified stage of warning here lord takes you till to the point of death since lord has a plan for you since lord doesn't want you to waste the grace provision of all time the great quality of all time bestowed upon you so what does he do he takes you till to the point of death and in his grace he doesn't want anyone to perish so he gives you more time that time at least you should realize that why have been been in such kind of a great danger why have we been in such kind of a point of death then to lord has given me now life so what i need to do i need to give top priority so lord gives more grace to the humble believer says james 4 6 so what we are doing there we are rejecting once again if you reject the doctrine and not accept more grace than the third point is sin unto death the sin unto death where lord gives you into the hands of satan and satan kills you the way it wants you to kill more drastically as a not as a father but as an enemy that's what dear brethren you need to understand conforming yourself to christ death is what you need to give top priority for doctrine if you're not conforming yourself to the death of christ and if you're giving those things which have been not counted worthful for you then you will be dying eventually sin unto death that's what many people fail to understand that's what they fail to look why they're getting these sicknesses why they're getting these epidemic diseases is that they are not neglecting doctrine lord has given very clearly in leviticus 26 and deuteronomy 28 to the point for us to explain that if you neglect doctrine such and such will come and attack you that's what ignorance of doctrine is the root cause for all diseases in this world not the food not the climatic conditions not any other point because perfect environment is never a solution for the work of the lord it is your right soul it is your right spirit it is the doctrine in your residence of your soul and you being ready to die like a martyr unto Christ gives you the point of the point where with you can be surviving for Lord's work to the maximum and that's what Lord never hinders you with the disease so that you can stop his growth you can stop his work you can neglect your edification complex Lord gives you more grace humble grace and more good health and good opportunity when you are ready to die as a conformable to Christ's death then you can say to the point for me to live is Christ and that is profitable as Apostle Paul could say but what we are saying for me to live is profitable by the medicines by the technology by the calico by the cryonics by the cloning by the uh, by the avatar of uh, of humanoids and genome technology we will be fine no it is by bible doctrine alone it is conforming to his death alone that we will be fine into the realm of bible doctrine and if you are not able to die for christ then for you to survive in this earth by xyz various sponsor schemes of social as well as scientific phenomena of the subjects of today's world will really ruin you to give top priority to bible doctrine satan is very cunning satan is very clever that's why you need to be very careful to know the deceitful things of satan the deep things of satan so you should not be ignorant of its devices so what is number one priority we have it through the bible doctrine when bible dogmatically claims to us to telling to the point that we need to be conformable to christ's death then that is a point of our life that we need to take and give top priority for bible doctrine and when we are surviving to the work of the lord's glory lord provides us greater grace greater health and the best food that we can ever enjoy to feast upon while you're still alive in this earth which is bible doctrine that's what lord says to us 
those who fear me and keep the righteousness and holiness of my words, I shall fulfill the desires of your heart. But this condition has been never been told by many of the people of the so-called today's Christian pastors. They tell, Lord is going to provide you the best, the desires of your heart. But the condition, if it has been required, that's what the point is much more to be emphasized. The condition if, that is what, if at all you follow righteousness and truth, if at all you look to the righteousness and holiness, then only I shall give you the desires of your heart will be the condition. But the pastors, living up the first half, they tell the second half, telling that Lord will bless you with the desires of your truth. Lord will give you XYZ things. No way. The first condition to be fulfilled is if you follow in righteousness and in truth, then I will provide you these things. So dear pastors, correct your teaching in your pulpits. Never give false assurance. Never give false hopes. But Lord will surely bless you for a person who has been truly repentant and to the person who is growing and who is becoming humble believer to learn Bible doctrine more emphatically than has ever been given in his life because now is conformable to Christ's death. So the word conformable literally means to bring to the same form with some other person, the same form which Christ had, the same form which Christ told to us as an example, my meat is to do Lord's will. Do you not know that I have come to do my father's business? Do you not know Get away, Satan. You are interested into the things of the rudiments of this world, but not the things of God. When Peter was being suggested or being used hyperbolically by Satan there. That's what, dear brethren, the conformity which the same other person had, the person which he had, the things which he could produce, the things which he could understand was real depth of importance for us. Can we have that same attitude? Can we give top priority for Bible doctrine? Can we look unto the business of God the Father? was best of for each and every individual believer, the individual believer with an astral contract for life as well as for eternity. Can we look to the protocol plan of God? Can we adhere to this unique spiritual life? Can we get into those things which Lord has demanded for us to be performed? Why are we not conformable to the image of Christ? Dear brethren, that is what you need to judge in the depths of your heart. Are you at least aware that such kind of a Christian way of life is being regarding in existence? Are you aware that we need to give top priority for the words of the Lord. We need to give for the top plan which Lord has kept for us. Why are you not giving top priority for all these things, dear brethren? And why are you wasting your time into looking for these useless and worthless things of this world? So made conformable means to bring to the same form with some other person. So the same form which Christ led, the prototype unique spiritual life but we have been given the operational type unique spiritual life that's why you have been indwelled by the trinity of course lord god the lord jesus christ while he was alive he was been indwelled by god the father and lord god the holy spirit alone but since he has been god who is true humanity and true deity but we the believers have been indwelled by three members more than one even christ couldn't have that since he was god but we are having three god the father god the son and lord god the holy spirit how much more more we need to be to conforming to the image of the Son wherewith he has been kept alive in this earth. So dear brethren, the Greek word which Apostle uses is the great kenosis, which meant to say of the passage in Second Philippians 2, 5-8, through 8, meaning it is in the verb form to give an outward expression of one's inner intrinsic nature. That's what dear brethren you have been, you and I have been called to show forth in our outward experience, the inner intrinsic nature of Christ and that was Paul's desire that he might so come to know his Lord the power of his resurrection which is being operative in his life that's what Christ being raised in you Christ being resurrected in you that's what the inner intrinsic nature to be reigning in you as it happened today for you or will it happen or never will it happen till you die on this earth that can be possible only when you have a true regard for the holiness of Christ based upon that trend. That's what Apostle Paul was so dogmatical enough to tell to the point the true inner intrinsic nature which could be bought is for the power of his resurrection which could be operative in our lives. Is Christ being resurrected in our lives? Is Christ being operating in our lives? Is Christ being given top priority in our lives? If Christ is not being given top priority then the power of his resurrection is made non-operative in our lives. Though he has been a joint party 
in our sufferings, though he would brought to the place where he would become both the inner heart life and also the outward expression of the same, like the Lord, with respect to his death, not merely his physical death, which was for others, but his death to self, as illustrated so vividly in the Philippians, in the self-emptying of the Lord Jesus in, sec in Philippians 2, 7. A self-emptying that was true of our Lord, not only in his act of becoming incarnate and of stooping to the death of the cross but also one that conditional his entire earthly life and made it a beautiful life it was a death to self a denying of self for the blessing of others that's what that blessing of others is possible in you is it being operative in you or not the power of resurrection is the message of resurrection which we need to understand apostle paul wanted to prove it and he did it because he was been chosen and he was being called to that office so that Christ could be manifested in him. But are we showing Christ in our lives? Are we manifesting the resurrection power operative to our lives? Are we still surviving for the fleshy things of this earth? Or are we looking unto Christ for the glory of his realm? This was what Paul was striving for. The most radical conformity is here indicated. The most radical conformity. That's what, dear brethren, the radical conformity towards Christ, the radical attitude to survive and to show forth the power of resurrection in our lives. But we are not having that radical conformity. We are being conformed to the radical image of Satan, to the lust pattern, fulfilling the eyes of our lust, the pride of our life and the flesh, the, the lust of our flesh, but not looking unto do the will of God the Father which could survive forever and forever. The will of God the Father is the fifth phrase which you spoke on the cross. I am thirsty to give top priority for Bible doctrine. And to give top priority for Bible doctrine, we need to know the mechanics, the mechanics of rebound graciously bestowed upon us. We have been involved by Lord God the Holy Spirit, Lord God the Father, and Lord God Jesus Christ, so that we can understand the true purpose of our survival. That's what, dear brethren, the radical conformity is what has been indicated in the power of resurrection of our message of today's April 5th, 2015. Are we being given this radical conformity to show forth the power of resurrection in our lives? Are we being given this wealth of most glory to the people of others as well or not? If you are having a pastor teacher, are you performing your duty accurately or not? So that you could not be ashamed when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ. If you as a believer, are you doing the duty wherewith you have been called to show forth the work of his maximum glorification by reaching to the status quo of spiritual maturity wherewith after that stage of spiritual maturity maturity there is no other way that you can go ahead that's what dear brethren you need to understand it was not only the undergoing of physical death like that of Christ but a conformity to the spirit and temper of his life the meekness the lowliness and the submission of Christ and the expression if by any means is not an expression of doubt but one of humility humility is genuinely required to have the perception of Bible doctrine if you do not have the genuine humility to understand and doctrine to give top priority for doctrine then dear brethren Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ because doctrine demands yourself getting humility if you're not having that humility it is not at all possible that's why Apostle Paul tells if by any means means an expression of humility it is a modest but assured hope that is what might attain as the Greek idea of the great text to arrive at as to a goal the Greek word here translated resurrection is only found here in the New Testament which meant to say ex anastasis or out resurrection which is the fourth objective of our spiritual life. The three objectives are spiritual self-esteem, spiritual autonomy, and spiritual maturity. And the fourth objective is ex anastasis or exit resurrection. Paul is not speaking here of the future resurrection of the physical body of the saint because that has been assured him in 1 Corinthians 15. Now Paul has in mind the spiritual resurrection of the believing sinner spoken of in Ephesians 2, 4 through eight a resurrection out from a state in which he is dead in trespasses and sins to one in which he is alive with the divine life to uh, divine life of God motivating his being 
Paul desires the full operation of the life of his Lord may permeate his life. This is the goal to which he is striving and the goal to which he has not yet attained. This is what, dear brethren, we need to understand. The physical resurrection is not the point. The spiritual resurrection, while you are still alive, though we have been dead in trespasses and sins, we have been made alive. And this made alive to be kept alive requires the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And to keep controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit in constant fellowship to be breathing it alive like the source of your breathing that you take you need to use rebound and not to grieve it not to squelch it but rather be in the spirit then when you are in the spirit you live in the spirit and walk in the spirit and do the things pertaining to the glory of the Lord so that this inner intrinsic nature can have the true outward expression of Christ. When your inner spirit or your inner renovation happens, your outward expression for surviving unto Christ also happens. And this outward expression of surviving unto Christ and representing radically the conformity towards the death of Christ by following those things like to know Christ better, to experience the same power that is the power of resurrection and by becoming a joint partaker so that we could be discovered among men and among angels both to the point of a good conscience that we are the true servants of Christ as a bona fide gift of a pastor teacher for the pastors and for the believers we are royal ambassadors and priests for Christ's glory. That's possible only when we can have this renovation in our thinking. So Apostle Paul tells, then will be realized in his experience what he longed for in his desire, that he might be found by man to be in Christ, to have him as his righteousness, to come to know him in an experiential way, to feel the power that raised Christ from the dead, surging through his being, to have a participation in his suffering for righteousness sake and to be made conformable to his death, to self as spoken of in the chapter of Chapter 2, verses 1 through 8 of Philippians. So, dear brethren, the power of resurrection, yes, for his sake, that is Christ's sake, I have been caused to forfeit all things that should be the message for you in today's spiritual resurrection. And I have counted them but dung in order that I might come to know him in an experiential way. That's what many people are counting dung as top priority, but not counting all things as dung to know the experiential way that has been provided for us to attain in the spiritual maturity by learning the word of the truth. And to come to know experientially the power of his resurrection, that is the power of his resurrection, which has been made alive from trespasses and sins, so that we could now experience that part of the Bible doctrine, and we could show forth the spiritual maturity, so that in the joint partaker of our of his sufferings that is Christ's suffering that is what in his prototype spiritual life the way he has been suffered now we have been having operational spiritual type the joint sufferings which has been suffered though he has been endured 10,000 pounds of weight we will be given only 100 pounds of weight because Lord has been tested to the maximum but we will be tested beyond our temptation which is not to be tested but in your temptation so that you can get along with the things easily under the power of his joint partaker and his sufferings that Christ could be manifested in you. So dear brethren, we have been telling to you again and again, you can attain that experiential way, that experiential way of your point of understanding for the positionally being kept alive then to the chief fallen angel superior than the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Positionally you have been kept superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Experientially you need to come to know the power of his resurrection and a joint participation in his sufferings. Being brought to the place where my life will radiate a likeness to his death that's what we need to radiate like a radical insertion that is what dear brethren the radical conformity has been here recorded the radical conformity which could be radiated in our death so if by any means I might arrive at the goal that is namely the exit resurrection out from among those who are dead that's what dear brethren the goal for us is to attain to that spiritual resurrection not physical body but an attainment of the point of spiritual maturity so
in verse 12 he continues not as though i had already attained paul says does not have reference to a failure to attain to the out resurrection from among those who are dead his death or his participation in the rapture if still alive on earth would be the only ways in which he could attain to this this word attained in this verse is from a different greek word than that in the preceding verse in the later instances we found that it meant to arrive at as at a goal here the greek verb speaks of an active appropriation that which Paul says he has not yet appropriated in absolute sense he mentions in verse 10 he has come to experience in some degree at least the power of God surging through his being he has entered into a joint participation with Christ in suffering for Christ's sake the stoning at Lystra is an example of that he has also been brought to a place in his experience where he radiates to some degree the selflessness and the self abigination of Lord Jesus Christ but he has not appropriated this laid hold upon this in the fullest measure there is room for much improvement and advance in this respect so he says either we're already perfect the Greek word used here does not mean sinless flawless but spiritually mature Paul uses it three times in contrast to the Greek words meaning spiritually immature and through spiritual resurrection he meant to say he need to attain to that spiritual maturity so the tense being used here is perfect Paul states that he has not yet come to the place in his Christian life where growth in spiritual maturity has been completed beyond which there is no room for further development and that as a result he is now in a state of absolute spiritual maturity he has not reached the spiritual impasse of non-development so this spiritual maturity is what the third final stage which we have been emphasizing spiritual maturity followed by cognitive invincibility that is doctrine will be the only role and problem solving device number 10 occupation with Christ followed by your evidence testing this spiritual maturity apostle paul has been speaking of not yet have attained spiritual resurrection that spiritual maturity so that i'm looking forward those things and leaving behind those which have been there the words follow after are from a greek word meaning to pursue that's what perseverance he has in mind the image of a greek runner streaking down the race course he is keeping up the chase so to speak he is pressing on toward a fixed goal the word apprehended is from the same Greek word translated attained but with the preposition prefix which means it is the local force down he wants to catch hold of it and pull it down that's what dear brethren we need to understand even we need to catch hold of Bible doctrine and get into our minds so like a football player who not only wants to catch his man but wants to pull him down and make him his own Paul wants to appropriate and make his own that for which Christ caught Paul and made his own Paul speaks of the letter in Galatians 1 16 where God's purpose of calling Paul into salvation and the office of apostle was that he might reveal his son in Paul and that is exactly what Paul is talking about in the expression being made conformable to his death so this is what dear brethren you and I as believers need to understand so it was Christ likeness that Paul was pursuing after looking unto the spiritual resurrection it is absolute Christ likeness that he says that he has not yet captured and pulled down so as to make his own that is what casting down the things which are dead and looking those things which are alive for Lord Jesus Christ service so not that I have already made acquisition or that I have now already been brought to the place of settled spiritual maturity beyond which there is no progress but I am pursuing outward onward if I may lay hold of that for which I have been laid hold of by Christ Jesus so Lord Jesus Christ lays hold upon you and me to attain to the spiritual resurrection and this is the message which we need to understand in today's resurrection which you are celebrating in the year of our Lord 2015 the inner intrinsic nature to be renovated the inner intrinsic attitude which which we can learn which we can gain which we can come to the point of the truth dear brethren many members are just following the ritualistical resurrection process of theory and preaching which is no way considered for us to be in the Bible Bible is very much true and very much clear to the point of Apostle Paul which tells to us 
to give an outward expression of our inner intrinsic nature to the praise of his glory in his grace by self emptying yourself to the conformity to the spirit and to the temper of his life the meekness lowliness and submission of Christ so that we can know better all the time what Christ is by experiencing the same power of ministry which involves in us that raised Christ from the dead and surging of his own being and becoming a joint participant for the sake of righteousness based upon holiness when we have only regard for the truth so to know by experience is what you have been ensampled in our words for resurrection and if you are not able to look by experience the things which has been taught for us then lord help you at the judgment seat of christ but my dear brethren it is my humble plea for you to know and to realize the spiritual resurrection attained only when you reach the spiritual maturity so once again i wish you all a happy resurrection process of spiritual realm only when you are able to conform to the depth of christ body so that you can realize the same attitude and the same version of your purpose and look and to become a spiritually matured one and this spiritually matured one where with there is no other process to go apart from learning bible doctrine through daily inculcation thanks god may come and tell when we are speaking in tongues we are spiritually mature there is nothing to do the only way which bible recognizes is to learn doctrine at the only remedy to any spiritual condition of your recurring problem must be found in the word of the lord therefore learning doctrine is paramount as the answer for your negative attitude and the ritual practices that you have been performing so that doctrine alone can be your love above all else and you cannot survive without doctrine even a single day because doctrine permeates your thinking and becomes your very own life and which way you go either you take it or not it is left to you either you listen to this tape or not it is left to you but the one who are a witness for the truth will hear this voice so to this extent for their growth i pray that lord god the holy spirit will enlighten them to attain that spiritual resurrection the spiritual resurrection of a quality of kenosis telling to the point the great privilege bestowed upon them for the purpose of glorifying my lord to the maximum where with they have been kept alive with the ample opportunity ever could ever no one can ever imagine or could ever think not only in the past nor in the future what we have now so to this end i wish you all a happy spiritual resurrection day of my lord which has occurred 2000 years back but when will the spiritual resurrection of spiritual maturity will occur in your hearts minds and souls lord help you with a remembrance to your top priority permeating your thinking with exegetical categorical and isagogical bible doctrine happy resurrection day with our head bowed and eyes closed closing movements have been dedicated to those who are without Christ without hope and without eternal life and the privacy of their soul inaudibly believing or expressing their volition that they believe in the son that is God the father telling to him that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life and this eternal life is theirs for their own and it is theirs for them when they have this faith alone in Christ alone and tomorrow we shall continue our regular subject so the choice is yours the goal is yours which way you go either perish without believing Christ or for a believer perish without learning doctrine to reach the spiritual resurrection the choice is yours So Father we are grateful for the privilege that you given to us to have fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten us in the things in the day of our Lord and Savior resurrected one in a, in 2000 years back so that even we can come to know the spiritual resurrection in Christ so that Lord we could praise we could become a praise to the glory of your grace to the only wise God our Savior who is our the royal patent king of kings and lord of lords the royal father of our family to this extent we pray that lord god the holy spirit enlighten us for we ask it in the name of king of kings and lord of lords even christ jesus our savior in christ's name we pray father amen